It has been almost a year since Hurricane Helene made landfall in the Florida Panhandle and then moved through South Georgia, Central Georgia, Eastern Georgia, North Georgia, West Carolina, and into Tennessee. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Weather Impact Team. Joining me right now is meteorologist Ben Jones from WMAZ TV in Macon. And Ben, we have talked about this storm before, and here we are again because this. This is a storm that was so impactful for our state, and this is a storm that we will never forget. No, we won't. It is hard to believe that it's been a year. Of course, we talked about it on the uh, six month uh, look back of that. But we're just when we look back at the situation as a whole, the fact that a storm this big came into South Georgia, came on up through basically the eastern half of the state and kept that power with wind and then all the rain, like you mentioned, for North Carolina. Absolutely amazing. It's been one of these uh, things that looking back over other storms, if we've been looking back over the books over the past year, trying to compare it to things, it's hard to compare it to some of those storms, Chris. You're exactly right. And you know, you're talking about the power of it holding together uh, as a hurricane, as it moved through much of the state. We have some statistics here of the storm and the impacts that it made on our state. Now, it first made landfall as a category four. That's when it was coming through uh, the Florida panhandle. But when we saw saw this storm come through the state of Georgia, we're talking about wind gusts at around 100 miles an hour. There were 249 deaths in the United States. That is the deadliest since Katrina back in 2005, and we just had that anniversary a couple weeks ago. We actually had 28 deaths in the state of Georgia, and look at this damage estimates, $5.5 billion in damage in timber and also agricultural losses. Now, we of course had flooding here in the metro Atlanta area. There were tornadoes and wind damage in East Georgia. Ben, I know you guys down in Macon had your share of damage down there as well. A very impactful storm in the, in the heart, straight from the heart of Georgia too. Yeah, it was. And we're and really and you and I've talked about this uh, on one hand, it was kind of dodging a bullet a little bit there. Kind of lucky that the storm was a little bit farther toward the east because we look at the track of these storms when they come in uh, and you know the, that track, if it's one way or the other, just a little bit west or a little bit east can be a world of difference. And so as far as the Macon area is concerned or think about it from Atlanta, uh, the I-75 corridor it was east of all that. And so the dirty side of the storm or the storm that's going to have usually where your tornadoes are going to be or the biggest punch for gusty winds that was just displaced off to the east of the eye. So that was the reason why all of our eastern counties uh, took a wallop uh, with that as it came on up. And we were still looking at 80 mile per hour winds. Uh, then you had the forward motion of the storm. So let's say I don't remember the exact numbers, Chris, but let's say the storm was moving at 20 miles per hour yeah. and you had 80 mile per hour winds. It was almost the equivalent of 100 miles an hour just with the movement of the storm. Um, and, and you and I have talked about this. If you go down I-16 um, or say you go to, for us, St. Simons going back roads, you know, going uh, Hazelhurst, places like that. These, some of these trees, they're young trees, so but it was almost like they're elastic enough that they had such a steady flow of wind for so long, they're permanently stuck at a near 45 degree angle. I'm talking about you're riding for miles and they're still that way. Yeah. Um, and just never stood back up. And that's, of course, the trees that did come down, the ones that are still there, just a testament to the just the consistent power of the wind with that storm. And, and this is a good and there's illustration. There's the track you're showing too. Yeah, this is a good illustration here of what Ben is talking about of the track now that it's over. We can see the historical track of the storm here. I'll zoom in a little bit closer here to where you see that landfall there in the Big Bend area of Florida. It was late night when it was moving inland and then it moved up through Florida into South Georgia. And then here you can see where we are here, Ben, Atlanta there. And then you can see where you are in the Macon area, how that track, this is what you were talking about there. The center of the storm went just to the east of you there in Macon. And we often talk about that right front quadrant of a hurricane or a landfalling tropical system that has the worst impacts there with it. So that was just to the east of you, just to the east of the Atlanta area. And that's what what sent all of the crazy weather in East Georgia over toward Augusta and up into South Carolina as well.
well. The, the center of that storm also stayed just to the east of Athens, and then it curved up like around Rabin County, moved up through western North Carolina, where we saw the impacts that it had there up through parts of Tennessee, Kentucky, back down toward the Nashville area before it finally uh, diminished there up near Nashville. So Ben, even though we're talking about both your city there in Bacon and where we are here in Atlanta, we were on the, I guess you could call it the cleaner side of the storm, mm -hmm. the, the side of the storm that's not as active, but we still had those impacts here, even on that quieter side of the storm. Yeah, we, we're doing a, a, an actual look back story here, uh, a special here at the station here today. And I don't know all the particulars of Atlanta. But wasn't Buckhead one of the places that had some bad flooding? We did it right on the Peachtree Creek. A lot of our creeks and streams were flooding and we're attributing a lot of that. Number one, not just because of the rain from Helene, but the rain leading up to it, a predecessor mm. rain event, you know, is, that's what we call it there, where we had almost a foot of rain. It was over 11 inches of rain that fell in those days, including the day that Helene hit. But we had a lot of that rain even before. So before Helene even got here, we had uh, creeks and streams that were just ready to come out of their banks. And then you add Helene to it and they did. So we did have a lot of that flooding here right inside Atlanta and in North Atlanta up in the Hanover West neighborhood, Bowler Road neighborhood. Those are the areas that were hardest hit when Peachtree Creek came up, came up out of its banks. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. One of these kind of unparalleled storms because of all the wind that was coming through for us. And then it gets all the way up and then we start looking not just Atlanta area. Then we started, you know, after the event is pretty much done, subsided here. And then we're looking at Western North Carolina going, you got to be kidding me. This thing is also a, a, a huge rainmaker, a flood maker uh, in the mountains of North Carolina. So it was just something, uh, it was a storm that had a little bit of something, uh, every, everything in the whole mix right there. If we can, Chris, I wanted to pull up some pictures uh, we were looking at today. Our producer, Megan, uh, may be able to take these full. Just to show you, though, just within a year, I talked about like driving some of these roads, going back down into southeast Georgia, how you can still see stuff. This is a look, uh, and Megan can tell me, I believe, is this going to be... Dublin area. So this is Lawrence County for us. Uh, Telfair County here. And this is at, at now. Wow. So you can see some cleanup and some uh, rebuilds, if you will, some places. This is somebody's driveway in Dublin. This was their only way in and out mm. of their property. And there it is now. So, uh, you know, pictures and video, that's how they'll look back and remember a lot of this stuff. Uh, but in the moment, they're probably like, wow, how long is this going to be this way? Uh, because it came in and just took out vital roadways. That was the only way in and out. Some people were just stuck for days. And the fact that it impacted so many people in our state, you know, a lot of times you would think, okay, it's just the southwest corner of the state. Of course, we can get relief down there to help, but it impacted. This storm went straight through our entire state there, impacting so many people. So the resources available for folks to clean up and to fix those roads and to fix those power lines were multiplied because the entire state was impacted by the storm. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it was a total domino effect and, uh, and just still amazing when you look back in the short term at how all the emergency crews, not just Georgia, but Southeast were able to respond to a lot of that. It's pretty amazing. Uh, and I think about too, when you were showing that track just a moment ago, there was that kind of northward movement just in the big bend of Florida. And then there was a little bit of a jog toward the east and then back north uh, at the beginning of that. So, you know, obviously we don't want anyone to be affected by the storm, but just just take for the sake of you and I talking for Macon yeah. and Atlanta. Yeah. All that would have taken is not that jog back at the beginning of that track when it was coming on shore in Florida. That was when it kind of did that eastward turn and then back north and it put it pretty much arm's length out of uh, reach for, uh, for us and definitely a little wider away for you as well. But had that been a little bit farther west and kind of followed 75 up, it'd be a totally different story for where you and I are talking from right now. I and mean, we're talking about 80 to 100 mile per hour winds in Macon, uh, you know, and then up in Atlanta, maybe not that strong of wind by the time it got there. Uh, but definitely more of that flooding effect and wind would have been more for the metro there too. So it's a game of inches when you watch this stuff. And of course, Somebody gets unlucky with it, unfortunately, uh, and this kind of proves that when we're watching these storms and we talk about one side of the track for the other, there is a there's a marked difference uh, really on that eastern side, that northeast quadrant you talked about 
Not saying you don't get wind and get maybe a little wraparound rain on that other side, but it's nothing in comparison to once it's just the way the things go. Spinning, uh, you know, counterclockwise coming in, that's always going to be the tougher side, and it was textbook this time. And Ben, you and I both know as we were tracking the storm before landfall and we're watching these prediction tracks from number one, the models, as well as from the National Hurricane Center. And some of those tracks were bringing the center of the storm right through Macon, right through the heart of, it, of the Atlanta area as well. And that was one of the scenarios that could have happened with this storm. So when we started seeing that little bit of a jog to the east, you never want to wish anything bad on anybody else um, with that, you know, motion to, you know, away from us. But we were actually breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief here when we started seeing that happening. You know, we didn't like what we were seeing for Augusta, but that little bit of a jog more to the east was making it a, a better situation for you and Macon and for us here in Atlanta too. Well, and you know, regardless of which way it played out, I, I, I know I'm sure everyone thinks this. I don't think I really want to see another one of these uh, no. anytime soon. You know, we've had um, a couple of them that have come in close. You know, for us being down a little closer toward the Gulf too uh, and the Atlantic, just kind of in that little triangle right there. You know, think about uh, Michael and uh, Irma and some of these other storms that have come in kind of hot like that. This one. I don't, you know, it, it's one of those where you, when you're watching all these tracks, you think, well, what's the worst case scenario? And this was one of those where mm -hmm. it just keeps its form and its shape and its strength, not just with wind, but with rain all the way up. So hopefully this is one of those storms that is once a century or something exactly. like that. And we're just kind of deal with things that sort of graze the coast as opposed to this. And speaking of that, Ben, crossing our fingers about this hurricane season, you know, we've been in a little bit of a lull in activity, especially with any storms coming anywhere near to the Gulf Coast or the Atlantic Coast. There have been a lot of fish storms out in the Atlantic so far this year. Mm -hmm. And we are just past the statistical peak of hurricane season. That was on September 10th, but this is still a very active time and it's really odd that we don't have as much activity out there right now, but I just don't want folks to kind of let their guard down thinking, oh, you know, we're halfway through. I'm really concerned about the second half of the season that could catch people off guard because it's been so quiet so far. And we're seeing some signals of the things that have been preventing us from seeing an active season so far that might be going away and things might start becoming a little more active out there. And I'm sure you're seeing those same signals too. Yeah, you know, we get these, uh, you know, we talk about troughs digging down in the southeast, basically steering currents. So, if, you know, we've had the, the luxury here recently, uh, these storms that have come across the Atlantic and then they're just getting kicked right back out. They'll kind of do a U-turn, Bermuda mm -hmm. between there and the Outer Banks of North Carolina and then go back out. So as long as that setup is there, that's good for us. But you're right, it may not stay that way. And of course, you think about this time last year, around September 10th, there wasn't a whole lot going on. I mean, you mm -hmm. look at Helene, you're two weeks after peak, and that was only the letter H. I mean, we've had some seasons where we you know we were having to get into the Greek alphabet and everything, you know. So uh, the fact that it was like, oh, it was kind of quiet, you know, right around peak, and then here comes Celine. So of course, we're not trying to say that's what's coming, uh, but it does say don't let your guard down and let's pay attention as we, we still got to get to November, you know, yeah. and things can happen. And my concern too is not necessarily for these storms coming off the coast of Africa. I'm more concerned about some of these that could form in the that's Caribbean right. or even form in the Gulf. Those waters, those Gulf waters are so warm right now. I know if anything develops there, we're going to see some rapid intensification. And as you and I know, you know, of course, we have to worry about stuff coming in from the Atlantic, but our main concern are those ones in the Gulf coming up around the Florida Panhandle or really just anywhere on the northern Gulf that would place us on that right hand side. We could have storms going through Mississippi or Alabama and the center's not over us, but we still would feel some major impacts there. So that's really what we're going to be watching for uh, for the rest of the season here too. Yeah, when you think about it, you're right. We're getting more into that geographically as kind of a, a spot where these things are going to take off. You know, you have you know, the Atlantic part and then the Caribbean and the Gulf. Uh, and you talk about not having to actually be even close to the storm. We just did a you know, look back on 20 years from Katrina, and I remember mm. covering that storm and the outer bands from Katrina. This thing was in New Orleans, yeah. and the outer bands had a tornado that leveled a bank in Fort Valley, a town yeah. that's just south of Macon here. Uh, and clearly, we were nowhere near Katrina. Uh, but you're right, anything that goes to our west, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, we're thinking about Atlantic, but as we start thinking about coming up from the Gulf and all that, 
that Helene sort of setup. Yes. That's what we don't want. That's our nightmare here. So Ben, thank you so much for uh, looking back a uh, one year later. You know, in a way it seems like it was just yesterday, but then in a way it seems like it was a long time ago. It was just it's something that we want to forget that came through our area. But it's cool to see the resiliency of the folks who are rebuilding coming together to help get, a, get everything uh, back to normal. So Ben, thank you so much for joining us here tonight and giving us your insight there from uh, straight from the heart of Georgia down there in Macon. And uh, we, I'm sure we're gonna be talking to you more coming up throughout the uh, hurricane season and really any time of year for all these weather, uh, weather information and things that we can share together for being so, these yeah. cities so close together. Thanks, Chris. It's an honor. It's a privilege. Uh, anytime, give us a call. We'll be glad to chat about it. Good All to see All right. You. Thanks, Ben Jones, meteorologist from MAZ, WMAZ down in Macon. And thank you for joining us for this look back at Hurricane, Hurricane Helene just one year later.